Hello! My name is Michal, and in this video I'm going to show you how to model a simple algebraic equation in Simulink using blocks from the Simulink library. Here is the algebraic equation that will be used to build a Simulink model. Before we go to Simulink, let's observe this equation closely. If you were to pseudocode this equation as a textual program, you can think of each operator as a math function. In Simulink, a function will be represented as a block so an add function will be represented by a sum or add block. Keep this concept in mind as we go ahead and create the Simulink model. First, we must launch MATLAB, the program that Simulink runs on top of, by double-clicking on its icon on the desktop. This launches the MATLAB desktop that you can see here. Now, let's open a new blank Simulink model. The conventional way to do this would be to type Simulink into the MATLAB command window, which is right here, and hit Enter. Then a Simulink start page pops up and you can select the blank project to open a new blank project. In our case, we can use the VEX Companion app by going to the Apps tab and clicking on the VEX Companion app icon. And from here, we can create a new Simulink model from the Companion app user interface. Now, to open our libraries, which contain the blocks that we will use to make our model, we can click on the Library Browser button in the Simulink window. This will open all of the Simulink libraries that you have, and you can see by default the Simulink one is selected, and it's open so you can see all of the various sublibraries. By clicking in a sublibrary, you can see the blocks in that sublibrary. Now, for convenience for VEX hardware, we have made a specific VEX library, which you can scroll down and find right here, called the Simulink Coder Support Package for ARM Cortex-based VEX microcontroller. However, if you do not have this library, you can still find the blocks that I will be using in this example in the Simulink library. For now, let's go ahead and minimize our MATLAB desktop as well as our VEX companion app interface and let's go ahead and make our Simulink model window a little larger. Now inside our Simulink model, as a reference, let's create a note of what the algebraic equation was that we're going to create a model for. In Simulink, I can add a note anywhere by double-clicking, which will open up a text box allowing me to type anywhere in my Simulink model. In Simulink, these notes are called annotations, and these are similar to comments if you have used other programming languages before. The dialog that appears next to the text box allows me to format it. I can increase the size to make it more readable, for example. Now what we will do is introduce blocks for the various math operations in this equation. As a first step, let's start with this a squared operation. This is a to the power of 2. To find a block that is able to represent this function, let's go back to our library and let's go into the math sublibrary by double clicking. Here, we'll look for a block that says math function. When you find it, you can simply click on this block with your left mouse button and drag and drop it into your Simulink model window. Once it's here, you can move this block around using your left mouse button, and you can also resize it. You can also hit the space bar inside your Simulink model at any point, and it will resize everything in order to fit in the viewable window and zoom in properly. Now let's go ahead and double click on this block. When we double click, it opens the block parameters dialog. And in here, you have a brief description of the block, as well as some parameters that you can change as needed. In our case, we know that we want an a to the power of 2 function, or a squared. So if we open this dropdown, we see our options. And in here, we see that we have two options, square and power. Let's go ahead and click this power option and hit the apply button. When we do this, you can see that the Simulink model automatically updates. And then I will click OK. Now if we take a look at this block, you will notice that there are two notches on the left side and a right arrowhead on the right side. These are called the ports of a block. On the left are the input ports of a block, and on the right is the output port of this block. Ports are nothing but the arguments of a function. So, in this case, on the left you have the input arguments to your function, and on the right you have the output argument of this function. To make things a little easier to understand, let's also go ahead and rename this block. You can do that by double-clicking on the name that's already there, and deleting the text, and replacing it. So in our case, let's say square. Next, let's add a block for the subtract operation. 
First, let me zoom out a little by using the scrolling wheel on my mouse. Now, let's go back to our math sublibrary and look for a subtract block. We can find it here and drag and drop it in. Now, notice that when you drag and drop the subtract block, you have a blue dialog that shows up which says list of signs. This is because by default, the subtract block has two input ports. However, you can actually change the ports to be more than two. When this list of signs shows up, you can say the list of signs that you would like to see. So if we wanted to have a positive, negative, positive, negative, and hit enter, it will automatically update this block. Now in our case, we actually just need the default, which is one positive and one negative, because we only have one subtract operation. So let's go ahead and delete this block by clicking on it and hitting the delete button on our keyboard. And let's bring in another one drop it in, and let's leave this as default. In Simulink, you will often see a blue dialog when you drag in a new block in order to help you set commonly changed parameters. Next, I will need a product block for the 3 times A times B. So for this, I can use the product block here. Now for this, I will actually need to have three input ports because I have two product signs between three values. And finally, I will need to have two more blocks, one for the addition, which I can use the add block, and one for the square root, which I can use the square root block. And for these both, we can just use the default, two input ports for add and one input port for square root. And thus I've added blocks for all of the math operations in this equation. Next, let's consider the constants and variables that are in this equation. 2 and 3 are the constant values in our equation, whereas a and b are the variables. For the variables, the values can be varying, so theoretically speaking, they can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. For practical purposes, let's say that their limits are from negative 127 to positive 127. Keeping this in mind, let's go back to our Simulink model. So we have 2 and 3 for our constant values. How do I represent these in Simulink? Well, if I go to the VEX library, I can go to the Utilities sublibrary, and in here you will see a block called constant. You can drop in this constant block and it will ask you to set the value, so we can set it to 2 and hit Enter. Now we have a block for the 2. Now for the 3, I can either go back to my library and drag in another block, or I can click on this one, right click, drag, and this will create a copy. And I can set the value of this one as three. And thus I have the blocks for my constants. Now, how do I add ones for A and B? I can't use the constant blocks because those are for constant values and A and B are varying. So if I go back to my utility sublibrary, I will have to use this variable input block. Now the variable input block, when you drag it in, prompts you for a low value, which we can set as minus 127, as we discussed. Now, if I double click on this block, you will note that it is nothing but a slider with a default value of zero, a low of minus 127, and a high of 127, and you can change these values from this dialog. You will also note that the variable input block has an input port. That's because what this block actually does is multiplies its input by the variable amount. So what we need to do is go back to our utilities and add a constant of 1 as the input to the variable input block. So what I can do is go ahead and align these two blocks, and when I go next to the right arrowhead, a crosshair appears. When I click on this crosshair, an arrow starts to come out if I drag, and I can drop it into the input port of this block. And thus I have created a signal, and even if I move the blocks around, the signal stays connected, and the 1 is still an input to the variable input, unless I click on it and delete the signal. Let's go ahead and reconnect these, and let's go ahead and rename this block to A. Now to create a copy of this, I can go ahead and use my left mouse button to select this entire group that represents A, right click, and create a copy, and I'll call this one B. And now I have blocks for all of my math operations, constants, and variables. Next, let's see how to put this all together. Now to begin to put this all together, let's start with the leftmost term, or a squared. For this, we know that we will need our square block, we will need the 2, 
and we will need this group that represents the variable input A. So let's move everything else off to the side and let's begin to create A squared. The way that this square or any math function block works is that the input ports from top to bottom correspond to the function from left to right. So in our case, since we need to have a to the power of 2 and not 2 to the power of a, a should be the top input port and 2 should be the bottom input port. So let's go ahead and set a signal from a to the top input port. You'll note that when I align a and the top input port, a blue arrow appears. If I click that blue arrow, the two will connect. And let's go ahead and connect this two into the bottom input port by dragging this crosshair into the bottom input port. Now the output of the square block is nothing but a to the power of two, or a squared. Next, let's create the model for the three times a times b. For this, I know that I will need three. I will need the value of a, which is over here, and I will need b. I will have to connect these using the product block which I can bring here and I can make a little bigger. Now I can go ahead and connect the 3 to the top and I can connect this B to the bottom input port. But how do I connect A? Well, you have two options. The first is that you can create a copy of the group that is A. However, a better way to do this would be to simply drag this input port's arrow into a line already coming out of A. And now the input into this product block in the second input port is also the value of A. And the output from the product block is now nothing but 3 times A times B. Finally, let's go ahead and create the third term or square root of B. For this I know I need B and I need the square root. And let's go ahead and zoom out and let's go ahead and do similar to what we did before and connect this input port to a line coming out of B. And now the output is nothing but the square root of B. And so we have each of our three terms. A squared is right here. Three times A times B is right here. And the square root of B is right here. Now that we have our three terms, let's go ahead and begin to connect them together. So first we have a squared minus 3 times a times b, so I will need this subtract block. And in here you know that the a squared should be the positive input and 3 times a times b should be the negative input. So we can go ahead and connect a squared to the top input port and 3 times a times b, which is the output from the product block, into the bottom or negative input port. Next what we need to do is take the output of this block, which is now a squared minus 3 times a times b, and add that to the square root of b. So for that, we will need to use the add block, and in here I can connect the output from the subtract block, and in the bottom input port, I can connect the output from the square root block, and now the output here is nothing but a squared minus 3 times a times b plus square root of b, or value of y. However, a better way to do this would be to use only one block for the addition and subtraction. So if I go ahead and click on this signal and delete it, click the signal and delete, and click the add block and hit delete, as well as this remaining arrow, what I can do is open up the subtract block and remember those list of signs? We can actually add another positive apply and hit OK. And now I have a third input port. And instead of having to use another add block, I can simply add the square root of b into this block itself. And the output here is y. So this saves us the use of one block. Finally, I have one other improvement that we can do to this model. You've seen that we could have used this product block to do 3 times a times b. However, a very common way to multiply by a constant value is to use a gain, which is also in this math library. It's the gain block right here. So let's drag this in and let's set the gain to three. And now let me go ahead and delete 
the signals into the product block and I will set this to have two inputs and I will delete this constant of three and in here what I can do now is simply multiply B times A and then I can actually take B times A or A times B which is coming out of this product block now and multiply that by three using the gain. So one way you can now insert this block is to go ahead and put it in this line that's already there and it will automatically get added in when you align it into the signal line that's already there. So now the value coming out of the gain is 3 times A times B. And thus we have created the model for this entire algebraic equation, y equals a squared minus 3 times a times b plus square root of b. However, we need to be able to actually view or observe the value of y that's coming out of this block right here. So for that we can go to the utility sublibrary and there's a block called display. If we drag that in and let's connect that to this subtract and add block, and basically what this will do is simply display the value coming out of this block, which we know is the value of y. Now we are ready to go ahead and run or simulate this model inside the Simulink environment. First, let me go ahead and save the model by clicking on this save button right here. And let's call this algebraic equation and hit save. And you'll notice that when I save the model, it updates the title of the Simulink window with the name of the model. And now I can hit this green run button. And you can see in the bottom left corner, this model is now running and the display block is now showing a value of zero. This is the value of Y while A and B are equal to zero, which is their default value. Now let's double click on A and let's double click on B. And this will open the sliders that we can use to control the A and B values. So I'll resize this window and hit the space bar. And let's just close this library. Now I can use these slider windows to change the values of A and B. Let me update A and let me update B. And you will note that as I change these values, the value in the display block of Y is also updating automatically. And thus we have seen how to simulate this model in the Simulink environment and how updating the variable values A and B using their sliders automatically updates the value of Y, which we can see in the display block. Now to stop the simulation, you can go ahead and hit the stop button up here, and this will stop your simulation from running. Now let me go ahead and save this model again, close these slider windows, and actually close this whole Simulink model window and show you how you can open it. So I will bring up the MATLAB desktop from earlier, and in here you will note that at the top you have an address bar, which shows you the folder you are currently located in. And on the left side by default you have a current folder panel. In here you will see the file called algebraicequation.slx, which is the model we just saved. To open it, simply double click on the name and it will open the Simulink model. Notice that the values of A and B are no longer the default zero, but are set to the values that they were at when I last saved the model. The nice thing about this address bar is that from here you can open other locations in your computer and in the current folder panel by right clicking on a file you can rename it, cut and move it, or copy and paste it elsewhere. Essentially this is like a Windows file explorer and you can open and modify models that are anywhere on your computer. That brings us to the end of this video which gave you a quick introduction to Simulink by going through the example of modeling a simple algebraic equation. For more Simulink tutorials and resources, or for more information on student competitions, please visit the following links.